guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Fitzgerald's Hyundai in Clearwater, Florida, and we're gonna do a little comparison of a 2019 Hyundai Elantra GT, which is the hatchback form of the Elantra, versus the new for 2019 Elantra GT N-Line. So let's talk a little bit about Hyundai's history. They've been around since 1987, one car was available, the Excel. You could get it in a sedan or a hatchback, but I'm telling you, since 1987, with the introduction of the Sonata in 89, the Santa Fe, eventually the Tucson, and everything has just blown up, the Tiburon. I mean, just a crazy lineup now. The new Palisades coming out. Lots of excitement from that South Korean car manufacturer that a lot of us have come to know and love because at the end of the day, you're going to get reliability, you're going to get one of the best warranties in the business, and you're going to get some really cool style and features. So let's go ahead and see how do these two differ from a base to a top tier lineup. So with the Elantra GT, when you say GT, we're just talking about hatchback, no performance there. You can see the headlight design, the functional air curtain. So what that means is, is when air hits the front fascia, it's gonna go into that air curtain and go down the side of the car. That is something to increase aerodynamic efficiency. I do like the gloss black and it works very well with this grill. And the thing that I like about the grill is I like all the little silver accents and I think it was very, very smart to put this integrated front lip spoiler into it. It really makes the car look more sporty um, from you know its intentions. And this car is straight to go up against the Golf, the Volkswagen Golf. Now with the GT N-Line, Hyundai's working on a performance brand. They're calling it the N brand. This is not a full N car, okay? What this means is, is that you're gonna get some performance and some extra styling tweaks, but you're, it's not going all the way because this car in Europe is called the i30 and they have an N version in Europe. We don't have that, we have the Veloster N, but with this Elantra GT N line, you could see the difference in the front fascia. Much more aggressive, still those functional air curtains on the side. I like the flat black. I like the flat black better than the gloss black. It not only looks good, but it's gonna take a better beating you could see the lower lip spoiler all the way across the front. I am gonna zonk this. I would like to see it come out a little bit further, but I love the style of the grill, the flat silver, and really the headlight design is so unique on this Elantra GT and Elantra GT N-Line. But why don't we go ahead, we're gonna take a look down the sides of these two Elantra GTs and see what's different. All right, so with the Elantra GT, this is the standard headlight design that you're gonna have, and you'll see when we focus more on the side of the N-Line, the GT N-Line, they do put a different headlight housing. The whole thing is different, and I think that's a cool feature to help separate the two different versions. As we come around to the side, here is our standard wheel. So this is a 17-inch wheel. I like the brushed aluminum. I like the darker metallic gray, and it really works well with this silver color on this particular one. I think they hit the nail on the head with choosing 17-inch to go up against, like I said, what the features you see on this, very similar to what the Volkswagen Golf is gonna have, and the Golf has been such a long-standing seller here in the United States that Hyundai wants to take some of that market share from them. As we go down the side, they do take the beautiful silver, sprinkle it on the mirrors, and there is no turn single. So I like the way it's flat black. I am gonna zonk it though, because I would like to see an LED turn single. Chrome trim around the top and bottom of the window frames. As we come down the side, nothing too aggressive with the side skirt or anything like that. I like the rear quarter window, and as we come to the rear, this is where it, it really, you could tell that they looked at the Volkswagen Golf. Very low roof uh, spoiler coming off the back. I do like the way it's, it's black to the silver. Now, the only problem with it being this gloss black is that it's gonna show wear a little bit more than if it was just all silver, but it looks really, really great at the back. And probably one of my favorite setup with taillights is on the Elantra GT. I like the way the, he the uh, taillights are set up, uh, and I also just like how clean the back is. You can see the lower portion here is flat black. I am gonna zonk it because there's no exhaust coming out the back, at least one but I think we'll see when we get over to that GTN line, everything that I've had problems with on this car 
is gonna be no more on the GT N line. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, GT N line time. You can see the different headlight housings back there. I like the way it's all blacked out and you have your three separate cylinders. Really gives it a unique look, especially when you look at other competitors' hatchback designs. As we come around, love how aggressive this is. Really nice the way they brought it around to the side. And then these are N-line specific wheels. So this is an 18 inch wheel. I love the color, I love the design of it. Really nice. What you can't see that's different than that Elantra GT, underneath the fenders, you have stiffer springs. This is not just an appearance package, which is wonderful. This is gonna perform better. If you know how to handle the business and get that wheel turning through those twisty bits, this thing's gonna handle better than any Elantra GT, even some of the other competitors. As we work our way down, here's where problems have been solved. Like the black on the mirror, there's the LED, nice slim LED turn signals, and then they went with flat black, which is really, really nice. As we go up, I'm glad on the GTN line, they stripped all the chrome off. You have the nice color match door handles. I wish, one area I'm gonna zonk, is I wish they would have done something with the lower sill. Had it come out a little bit further, sort of like a WRX, a Subaru WRX. I think that would have just made the front and the back a little bit more cohesive. Underneath this rear fender, you have that multi-link rear suspension. It's been stiffened up to give you better handling front and rear. And then speaking of the rear, I love the rear on this one. Like the upgraded LED uh, taillights, I love the design. Zonk in the spoiler though. I wish they would have went a little bit more of a kick up, something a little bit more aggressive to show the intentions of the end line. But boy, when you drop down, here's what I'm talking about. I love this rear diffuser, the dual exhaust. I am gonna zonk this. Why did this have to be here? Just make it flat black, who cares? Why do we have to put a fake grill there? Or just get rid of the grill and leave that little ripple design in there. I'd be fine with that. But there's the end line badge. I'm, I'm quite surprised that they went so large with this badge. On many other manufacturers, um, like Volkswagen and whatnot, it's a much smaller badge because look, if you do that, this looks like an Elantra GTN. Maybe one day, fingers crossed, say a prayer, put a quarter underneath the pillow, maybe we will get the Elantra GTN and we'll feature it here on Radies Rise. But let's go ahead, pop the hoods and see what we're working with. All right, guys, here we are. Hoods are popped. Let's start with the Elantra GT, the standard Elantra GT. That is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated engine. You're putting out 161 horsepower and it's mated to a six speed automatic transmission, not a DCT. Very clean under the hood, nothing really to write home about. And that's okay because this is a perfect daily driver to get you wherever you want to go and have the flexibility of it being a hatchback. Let's transition over to the end line. Here's what we're talking about. Now we're talking about a 1.6 liter turbocharged engine, 201 horsepower, and it's mated to a seven speed DCT. That's a dual clutch transmission. Those gearboxes shift very quickly, especially when you're using the paddles located behind the steering wheel, but this is going to give you the greater performance over the GT. So the GT N line, you're looking at the 201 horsepower. If it was an actual GT N, it would have 275 horsepower. Doesn't that sound fun? Now you do get the different suspension and it, both of them are obviously front wheel drive. Let's go ahead though and fire the two of these Elantra GTs up. All right, guys, we're inside the 2019 Elantra GT. Before I go any further, I know you're gonna to wanna to know price. The price on this one, the way it sits, is MSRP $21,000. Definitely give Igor a call, though. They're blowing these Elantra GTs out if you really want one. Let's see what you get for the money. So, just like so many other Hyundai products, I hate the door panels. So much black, so much hard plastic. Only thing that's silver is just the door handle to open it. Everything else is harder plastic. You do get a nice assortment of places to put your drinks in the cup holder pocket down there. So that is a really nice feature. But overall, 
this car is about bang for the buck. When you get to the dash though, soft material up top, harder in this area, but I do like the orange peel texture. It's not too overly done. You have a nice size uh, infotain uh, infotainment system, touch screen, of course, all your different controls. You could just push the button if you don't like to touch the screen, but uh, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, really nice feature. You could go back home, there we are, go back into menus, and there's your swipe feature just like any cell phone. Nicely shaped AC vents. As we drop down, good old fashioned AC controls, your blower switch, your temperature, what else do you need? Down here, they got you covered. Hyundai's got you covered. Two 12 volts, a USB, and an aux jack there. Nice little cubby area. I'm not even gonna complain about a door at this price point. Fake buttons, that's a zonk. I wish, why can't they just like have a panel that just fills that all up? It would make it look much cleaner. You do have two different drive modes, normal and sport, and this is the six-speed automatic transmission. Lots of rubber, rubber on the shifter, some type of faux leather for the boot, which is nice. Good old-fashioned e-brake, no frills, two cup holders, a hard armrest, but it's there. Open it up, you got a nice cubby, and then the seats. Actually good looking for cloth. I don't mind the design. The, the uh, material feels very durable. You got some nice white contrast stitching. Overall, the bottom is a little flat, but I think that on a long drive, they're actually gonna do pretty good for you. But why don't you come on over to the business end and I'll show you behind the wheel of this Elantra GT. All right, guys, business time. What kind of business can we do in this car? A little love bug. Right now it's love bug season. They're all over the place. But here's the steering wheel, that rubber material. You have a little bit of silver trim. You know, the thickness of the wheel is nice. It would be nice to have some type of faux leather or leather material, but like I said, MSRP, $21,000. Very easy to get to the controls on the steering wheel. And then nice, simple gauge layout. And it's okay, simple is okay, because it looks good, easy to read. Digital display there in the center, letting us know that the door's open. You could toggle through your different uh, pieces of information when it comes to fuel consumption and whatnot. But overall, I'm comfortable in here. Something that I could drive every day, long distance, no problem, plenty of headroom, and I feel like I have the seat jacked up. Let me go ahead and jack it down. Manual controls, I feel like I'm pumping for oil or something, but there, I feel pretty good. Let's go take it for a spin, but first, let's check out the back seat. All right, guys, back seat time. It is a little cramped back here, um, especially because I had to move up the seat. I'll be honest, I'm not gonna tell a fib, uh, but move the seat up a little bit did give me more leg room, but if I was sitting in that seat, it would need to be a little further back. But sitting back here, the way the seat is, it's, it is comfortable. You know me, I'm not a big fan of the plastic on the backs of the seats, but you gotta keep into consideration the MSRP on this. No connectivity whatsoever, but you do have an armrest. It is padded and you have two cup holders right here in the center, so that's gonna make life a little easier for your passengers. But why don't we go ahead and check out the cargo area and see what you could put in this thing. All right, guys, time to check out the back. It's real simple. You just push the button, very light lift gate, and surprisingly a lot of room. Now, one thing I want to point out is on the side, you'll see that you could actually adjust the level of the back portion. Right now it's on the lowest setting, but you could actually bring this up and have it sit on this divider level right here. Seats do the 60-40 Tango split, nice security shade, and you know what? Large opening for a smaller car. Why don't we go ahead, we've been talking about this GT, let's go see that end line over there and see what the heck's going on. All right guys, we're inside the 2019 Elantra GT end line. Now remember that end line was all about adding a little bit of performance, not going too crazy, trying to fit many different price points. If you're wondering, well, what is the price, Joe? MSRP on this one is $25,000, like I said, just like on the other one. Give Igor a call. They're blowing out these things. The prices, they're really knocking them down. So highly recommend giving them a call. But let's see what you get for an MSRP of $25,000. Same door panels. Hard as a rock. The material is softer at the top of the door. But other than that, nothing to really write home about. They did kind of darken the door handle to open the door to a, a like a gunmetal gray. How about some red trim? The GTN line is, has red trim on the AC vents. Take this beautiful red trim, sprinkle it on the door. I'm going over to South Korea, I'm telling you, and I'm gonna let the CEO of Hyundai know, use some color. Same size infotainment system, 
It's gonna do the same exact thing. You got your swipe feature, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. This one doesn't have any navigation. Would like to see the red trim around the AC vents. That would be nice. This one has dual climate. So instead of your single climate control, you have your dual climate control. Toggle switch is really nice. This one gives you a lid. You open it up, 12 volt, USB, aux jack, and then this is what's controlling the seven speed DCT. Six speed auto, seven speed DCT. This looks like it's out of an Audi. I'm telling you right now, if I covered the end logo, I love the leather material on the shifter, the aluminum, the nice leather boot with the red stitching, the end performance badge, you got heated seats, you got some fake buttons, and then there's your drive mode button. Electronic e-brake in this one, your two cup holders, but the best part is you could cover it up, you get a nice little key. It would be nice if it said end line on it, that would make it extra special, uh, key fob. So we'll just put that back here. Took the red stitching onto the armrest, but it's still hard as heck. You open it up, you do have a 12 volt, and that's about it, no USB, which you didn't have anything in the other one. And then these seats, love them. They're comfortable, they're supportive, they hold you in. It's got the end branding on it. I love the red stitching. They should have put red on the doors. Maybe next year, but why don't you come over to the business end and I'll show you what's going on over here. All right guys, business end, behind the wheel. Still manual controls, but like I said, I do love the full leather seats. You do get brushed aluminum down there on the dead pedal. One of the largest dead pedals in the business. Hyundai has done a great job with the dead pedal to hold you in place. Brushed aluminum on the brake and the gas. Those are just white stickers to protect it from being scratched. And then my favorite part is the steering wheel. Obviously tilting, obviously telescoping. Once you get it set, I love the shape of it. Very good thickness, simple small horn button. I like the end badging there, the gunmetal gray simple controls, a little bit of gloss, and then basically the same gauge layout as what you saw in the uh, standard Elantra GT. Now this is push button start, it's in sport mode, analog instrumentation, it looks good, it works good. You actually have pretty large ped paddles behind the steering wheel. They are plastic, but they're nice and large and that's gonna help you shift through your DCT transmission. Speaking of that, we're not gonna look at the back seat. It's the same over there, I promise you. And the cargo area is exactly the same. Take my word for it. Let's take these for a spin. All right, guys, so we just pulled out of Fitzgerald's Hyundai. We're in the 2019 Elantra GT. This is the base model. Um, as the Elantra GT comes from the factory, everything just standard affair. That naturally aspirated engine, about 161 horsepower, six-speed automatic transmission. You know, great visibility out the front. Really great visibility all four corners. The back window especially uh, is very large and, and looks really good. You're able to see everything. I'm telling you, these infotainment systems that are the iPad style, they may look a little bizarre, but it's easy to get to things and it's easy to see. And the screen that they use on the Hyundai products doesn't have any glare whatsoever. The instrumentation could use a little bit of help. It looks very rental car-ish, but we gotta compare apples to apples. It's something that if you went with a higher trim level, then you would get a little bit nicer setup there. But it gets the job done and it's easy to read. Let's do an acceleration here from a slow roll. So zero to 60 in the Elantra GT is gonna take you about 7.9 seconds, which is a little bit on the slower side. Wait until we get in the GT N line. You'll see what I'm talking about. With that 201 horsepower, with the DCT, it's gonna be much quicker, I promise you that. But overall, it's very comfortable in here. It gets the job done. It just, you know, there's a lot of black in here. If you don't mind that, it's really not that big of a deal. I guess the good news is fingerprints. It's not gonna get a bunch of fingerprints all over the place, but tipping it in, handles the way it's supposed to. There's a Miata over there going backwards. I don't, I don't know what country they do that in, but just a very smooth driving car ac works great and i think the thing i like the most about this compared to the inline is this one actually has the two 12 volts and the usb and the aux jack where the gtn line only has one 12 volt up front here the cabin is actually on the quieter side which is a nice surprise and i like i said i just think this really gives people good value 
for the dollar. Let me go ahead and get on the loud pedal. Drops down. Shifts are smooth. I do like the thickness of the steering wheel. I just don't like the rubber material, but we just gotta keep remembering that this is not the end line. Brakes feel good, good pedal modulation. Back on throttle. The great news is, is that when the transmission shifts, it doesn't make a bunch of noise. We've been in some cars, different brands, where the gearbox is very noisy, it's very smooth. The engine is a little buzzy, but it is a little 1.6 naturally aspirated engine, so 161 horsepower, it's gonna sound like that pretty much. Uh, but I do like the way the gauges are backlit, that's a very nice touch. But we're gonna go ahead and switch seats and get in that GT N-Line. That's where the fun factor is gonna really go up compared to this Elantra GT. Plus you still get all the great usability of the hatchback design. But let's go ahead and I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, rolling out of Fitzgerald's Hyundai. We're in the Elantra GT N-Line and the acceleration, you can tell right off the bat, 201 horsepower out of that inline four turbocharged engine. Right now I'm using the paddles to shift the DCT. It tells me I'm in fourth gear and it's very easily displayed, which is nice. But on throttle, my only major gripe with the driving experience of the end line is I need a little bit more sound. Can we just have a little bit more sound coming from the back? I'm gonna put it in sport mode here. You'll see it lights up sport, but even in sport mode, you're not getting the sound like you think you, you would and that you should. But just like on the Elantra GT, visibility is great. And even I think the suspension just, even when you're going straight and narrow uh, in the GTN line is, is far superior than in that Elantra GT. You do also have a little bit different brake pad um, material to help you slow down a little bit quicker and we're gonna do that in a split second here. So we're in sixth gear, I'm gonna make a right hand turn on the brakes, downshift, fifth, fourth, third. Really holds a line nice and not a lot of torque steer coming from the front end. Because remember, this is front wheel drive, 201 horsepower. Sometimes that could be a little bit too much for those front tires to hold, but you know what? Pretty good size on that rim and tire setup uh, at the front end of the business, which helps you hold the line better with the uh, end line. But you definitely can feel the difference in the way that this handles compared to the Elantra GT. Right, guys, acceleration with that 201 horsepower is very, very nice. The boost comes in at a very low RPM. Downshifts, you can hear I'm using the paddles. First gear, you get a little spin, that traction control kicks in, and you're off. Now, zero to 60 in the GT end line is gonna be around 6.3 seconds. So you're basically shaving almost two seconds off your zero to 60 by going this route with the turbocharged engine. And it makes sense, I mean, 40 more horsepower. Uh, I think we'd all wish for 40 more horsepower no matter what we're driving. Um, but I just like the feedback you get from this really nice wheel. The size of the wheel is great, especially the thickness. And I like the feedback that I'm getting. Even when we accelerated from that stop sign, there was not much drama from, from torque steer at the front end of the car. So that is really nice. Whatever they did suspension wise is not only helping with the handling, but also getting the power to the ground without wrestling the steering wheel out of your hands but very, very smooth. Let me go ahead and get through this transition here. Yeah, it, it holds a line very, very nicely. The seats feel great. The bolstering is a really good compromise between too aggressive and not enough. Let me go ahead and uh, get on the brakes again here. We got the green light. Very smooth coming out.
just wish there was a little bit more sound coming from the exhaust. That's all. I think if there's just a little bit more sound for the price point, this would be a great buy. And please put some red trim on the door panels. If you put a little bit of red trim around where the door panel, the door handle is, uh, I think you'd have a nice cohesive package, especially around the AC vents here. But hopefully this gave you a great comparison that, hey, a, a little bit more will get you a lot more when you're sitting behind the wheel in this GT N-Line and the extra styling, which is really nice. Let me go one more time, see if I can get this right-hand turn here. Really nice. Look at that, that's really nice. I, I really enjoyed that. But we're back to Fitzgerald's Hyundai and we're gonna wrap this one up so I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been a fantastic day here at Fitzgerald's Hyundai. Definitely gotta give a huge thank you and a huge shout out to Igor and everybody here at the dealership just open up the doors getting not only one but two for a comparison if these are the types of comparisons you like to see on ready's rise leave a comment in the comment section if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more if you are a subscriber thank you for being part of the ready's rise family if you want to help the channel help support us and get yourself some ready's rise merch click the link in the description takes you right to Spreadshirt, and we got to give it up for the big guns mcgee Bigger heart, bigger soul, bigger mind. Tom Moshner working the camera. Thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. Check him out on Instagram, at Mosh Photos. He actually has a picture of his heart on his Instagram profile, so check that out. So thank you, Tom. And just like always, I'll see you on the next ride.